Hey there, everybody. Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about firearms locking devices. Now in a prior video, we took a look at a stop box handgun lockbox, which for me has become pretty much my go-to solution for day in, day out handgun security. This here being a real simple solution to get my handgun in a lockbox without too much difficulty. If you look here, this is very simple. It's really quick, the ability to get my hands on this fairly easy, but more important, keep it out of the hands of my children or anybody that I don't want really accessing this. Now, sometimes you can't always make it to the safe. Maybe you don't necessarily want to. Well, what do you do with a larger firearm? Like say, for example, a shotgun. Well, today we're gonna to take a look at a product from the people at Stopbox who have a solution that for me has really become a really great part of my overall security plan. Now, can you just use a device like this and call it good? Well, no, not necessarily, but there are points where for me, this has been absolutely perfect. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna take a look at this in detail. I'm gonna get this mounted onto the shotgun, give you a little bit of discussion as to why this is a great solution for anybody. Maybe not a solve all, but part of your security system and then what we're gonna do is go through some settings in here to allow you to kind of customize it to the way that you need it. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Stopbox who did provide this for review. Now taking a real quick step back at the original stop box for the handgun. The premise of this is quick access. Now here, leveraging some buttons, pushing down and popping this open. This is really, really fast. Yet at the same time, once fully engaged, it's a little bit difficult for somebody who doesn't understand the mechanics of this. And that's kind of the point. You know, you're not taking a lock and installing it onto something that needs a little more dexterity. This is fairly easy once you understand it, but it takes that understanding to get to the point where you can even open it. Now this here is the Mossberg 590 Thunder Ranch Edition. The concepts today are gonna be true pretty much no matter which shotgun you have, but you can see this particular model did come with a cable lock. So threading it through here, you can see this is a pretty effective method to locking up your shotgun fairly easy. But at this point, even though I have this secured, the question is, well, what do I do with the key? Do I have to stash it? Do I have to put it on my key ring? What about when I wanna get this off? What if it was actually at the point where I had like a security issue that I really needed to deal with this and get to my firearm quickly? Well, keys can be a little bit cumbersome and again, it's not perfect and nothing is and neither is this shotgun chamber lock. But to me, there's something sort of nice about the ability to, and I don't know, these are all sort of like temporary methods, right? So when I said this is not gonna be perfect and it's part of a system, well, sometimes you need temporary, you need quick, you need easy access. Maybe you're walking away from your firearm just for a few minutes, but you're trying to do the right thing, you're trying to be responsible, you're trying to protect people and really follow the law. Well, at that point, you know, you kind of need some stop gap measures. I can't always literally go back to the safe every single time. But what I can do is in a moment's notice, get a device installed onto my shotgun that now leaves it secure. It disables the firearm. It doesn't allow it to fire. It doesn't allow you to load ammo. There is where the stop box chamber lock comes into play. And when you need this in a pinch, well, again, very quick and easy, comes right off and you are ready to go. So the people at Stopbox, very smart. They are making locking devices that then become part of your, and I would call it your security system. So again, is a simple 
lockbox for a handgun, like a fully secure and permanent system? No, but it is part of the overall picture. The chamber lock, the exact same thing. So again, is this all you need for your shotgun? No, but for me, it's part of my security system. And this is absolutely cool. So taking a look real quick, it is very basic in terms of the principles. What you're gonna do is pretty much depress some buttons. So a combination that you choose, in this case, it comes default with your pointer finger. And in reality, they're kind of saying to go with your pinky, but I found if I span, it's a little stronger to go between my pointing finger and then my middle finger on there. And then depressing with your thumb, pressing that down all together. And that initiates the mechanism. If you look here real quick, you'll notice as I press this here, that allows this little, uh, I don't even know what you call it. It's kind of like a stopper to depress. And that's pretty much what allows that to get into the chamber. Now this is well beveled, nicely rounded and machined, has a rubber gasket to try to avoid scratching things up and to get the proper buried depth. But again, what you're doing is you're getting on those buttons, you're depressing and simply installing it into the chamber. So at that point, this is secure. That's not gonna come out. It doesn't slide around left to right forward back, just goes in there nicely. There is a little bit of give, so you can sort of position this if there's one place that works better for you or another. Uh, but for me, I just kind of stick it in there and it's good. And so, yeah, now this is secure. And well, where does this work for me? Well, bottom line is, I mean, and to be honest, as a gear reviewer, a lot of times I'm working on my stuff. Um, you know, I'm looking at products, I'm working on things that requires my firearm to be maybe out on my desk or out on the counter for an extended period of time. And well, things happen, I need to step away. I need to address other things within my household. I have kids around, I have responsibilities. And so for me to have the chamber lock sitting here and li literally in a moment's notice, I can stick that in, put this down. And well, now my firearm is secure. That gives me a level of safety. It gives me some peace of mind. It follows the letter of the law. That's a big deal. So again, this stop box chamber lock, not perfect for every solution, but it definitely has its place. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention when I did my review of the original stop box handgun lock box. Now, these are made in the USA. You may or may not make that a defining feature, but to me, that's a big deal. I mean, just keeping things sort of domestic, keeping things, you know, made around where you live and putting the good people of the USA to work. That's a big deal. So Stopbox doing a great job, really sourcing materials and at the same time making these in the United States. So that's a big deal and something I think is worth noting. And so as mentioned, this comes with a default combination. So simultaneously now pressing with my index finger. So the top button, the bottom button, and then at the same time, my thumb. That's what's initiating the mechanism. But what if you don't like that? What if you wanna change it? Well, right now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through the process of changing this up. And for me, the defining sort of, I don't know, reason to change it would be my hand mechanics. One, so first, what do my hand mechanics naturally do? What's my strength in my grip? How do I get on this the easiest to allow me to actually depress everything the way I need to? And then second, what's a safe combination, something that hopefully people aren't gonna figure out? And I can tell you already that when my kids and when my wife try this because I do try to get them to actually break into things, to test them out and to see if it's effective, they always push all the buttons together. So I would strongly urge that you don't select literally like all of these and even maybe like three of them's a little bit dodgy. Now, I don't know that this particular uh, device is gonna have the ability to set it that way. The original stop box handgun lock box does have the ability to change out uh, you know, your combination and actually go to the point where you could depress potentially all four. Uh, but I would not suggest doing that with this. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna get into this in a little bit of detail, but I haven't looked at this at 
all and we're going to figure it out together. So here I have the instructions and we're going to take a look at what it takes to actually reset the combination. And now the first thing you'll notice is this does require security bits. And unfortunately, this does not tell you what size you need. But the good news is the people at Stopbox have thought about this and they're taking care of you. So here, this is a T10 security bit. This actually comes directly with the device, which is fantastic. So the people at Stopbox thinking about the details and your ability to successfully get through the changing of the combination. So you will need a driver, but at least they provide the bit. So the first thing we do, caution, the finger actuators are under spring-loaded compression force. Keep pointed in a safe direction. Wear safety glasses while changing the combination. The thumb actuator is held to the lid assembly by spring-loaded compression force. If the thumb actuator becomes dislodged from the lid assembly, the spring will release from the lid assembly. Take care not to accidentally remove the thumb actuator from the lid assembly or to lose the thumb actuator spring. Do not use Powered screwdrivers when reinstalling the screws, hand tighten until they are firmly held in place. Careful not to strip them. Use the provided Torx security bit to unscrew the four screws on the back side of the shotgun chamber lock. So that's first. So getting on it here should be pretty straightforward. Yep, torqued. You can feel that they did torque these down and I'm not sure what the specification is, but they do come out. So that's good. Now underneath here, you have this little rubber gasket, which we looked at. So keeping in mind, this will only go back in one direction. So we're gonna set that aside. And my driver is too short to reach. So the actual chamber uh, sort of locking mechanism gets in the way. So I need a longer driver for this. But no problem, this will work just fine. And no worries or concerns that anything was going to strip. This seems to have gone very well and no problem at all. Okay, so now opening this up, here is your lid. You can see everything nicely greased and lubricated. I'm gonna be kind of careful not to get dust or grime in here, so we're gonna leave everything sort of set to the side, face up. Now working here on the lower section, this is what has all of your actuators. Again, nicely lubricated and greased. With a Phillips screwdriver, remove the two screws. Retaining the finger actuator assembly, remove the finger actuator assembly from the handle by lifting the right end and pulling the finger actuators out of the slot. So first things first, let's get these screws out of here. This is not a number two Phillips, it's smaller than that. So like a number one, get these out of here. And remember there could be spring tension on some of this stuff. Okay. So now I need to get this assembly out of here. Just popping that out, there you go. So no problem there. Now this is very similar to what we see on the standard stop box. In fact, the people at stop box sent me some actuators from the original lock box. And I'm gonna compare these real quick to see how they compare against the shotgun chamber lock. But as we get into it, there are two different types. I'm gonna use these ungreased ones here to demonstrate to you. So they have some that are called normally locked, and then they have some that are called normally unlocked. And the difference being, if we look at these here, normally locked makes almost an L in this cutout. And normally unlocked, is the reverse, so it's like an upside down L. And the difference there being, well, depending on what you want to depress, some of them will depress, some of them will not. But the ones you need to depress to unlock the chamber lock, well, those ones are called normally locked. So normally locked must be pressed to unlock the stop box. And normally unlocked are the ones which are not pressed to unlock the stop box. So in other words, any of them that look like an L are the ones that we need to get positioned into the fingers that I want to depress. And for me, I'm basically going to do the top ones, so the ones towards the top of the device, which are these two. So as these are pointed to the left, the top two are the ones that I need to be normally locked which is this one and this one. So this one's already right, so I'm good there, 
but I need to swap this one with this one. And that will do exactly what I need. And the way you do that, this is very similar to the original lockbox. Pretty much, I've done it this way. I kind of lift these up carefully and they will pop out. It takes a little getting used to, but it's not too difficult. There's a little sort of tab that holds these in place and they do come out fairly easy as long as you're careful. And then getting these back into place, well, you'll see the underside, there is a spring. So you do not want to lose these springs, but you set this underneath. You basically get the spring to press against the stop, pop these back into place, and well, there you go. It's literally that easy. So resetting the combination on these is fairly simple. You just need to pay attention to the details. Now these actuators are literally the exact same actuators on both the original stop box and also on this chamber lock. So that's awesome. I mean, you do have the ability to get their accessory pack so you can really fine tune your uh, pattern. So not just having a combination of two buttons, but you could theoretically do a combination of up to four normally unlocked, four normally locked, anything in between, combinations of three or whatnot. So that is pretty cool. So changing the combination here, very straightforward. At this point, I should have it so that once I get this reinstalled, it's really the top two that will be my normally locked, so the ones that I do depress. That was a very simple and very straightforward change out. Literally just took a mere matter of minutes. And now that I've done it once, this will be super fast moving into the future. Now I'm gonna hold this tight and just, you know, before I put in the screws, check this and well, there you go. So that works trying any other combination. Nope. And here you go. Quick and easy. No problem. So now the top two here are the ones that activate the actual mechanism. So putting the screws back in all into place, I got to put the ones for the inside to hold everything back down with the Phillips. And I'm not going to over tighten anything. I'm just going to do this, you know, nice and sort of firm, but yet at the same time, I'm not going to overly torque on anything. Some of this is plastic. Some of it is metal. So you just want to be careful, not crack anything, not damage threads, but very nicely made. I am very impressed at the people at Stopbox who are thinking about how to do this. I mean, this is a brilliant product. And again, I go back to my premise, which Although not perfect for all situations, it's very, very good for many. Now, do be careful with these screws. There are two longer ones and two shorter ones. The longer ones going through the top, the shorter ones going through the bottom. Just pay attention to that so everything fits down nice and flush. And now reassembled, no problem. Working perfect. And so the very last step, just getting this gasket back and into place. Now pressing the buttons here, so you can see, pressing these there and getting this reinstalled into the chamber. Super fast, super easy, changing out the combination, no problem at all. Once you get used to it, 10 minutes or less. And now at this point, I have a custom combination ready to suit my needs. And so again, I'd like to say thank you very much to the people at Stopbox for providing this chamber lock for review. I am very impressed at the people at Stopbox. I think they're doing a great job. They're thinking outside the box a little bit for solutions that give you quick access to your firearms and good quality safety. Again, I go back to my original premise, which is I can't always go back to the safe. I don't always want to leverage a cable lock. I don't always want keys. Biometrics, well, they're okay, but sometimes batteries fail and, well, you need a backup plan. So when it comes to a shotgun, it's also not the most convenient, but this offers a level of convenience. And again, not to be complacent, but there are times and reasons 
why quite frankly, I just need to leave my shotgun on the bench. I can't always go back to the safe, but I have to always be safe. And that's something that for me, this stop box chamber lock really affords me that ability. So to protect my family, protect different people who may be around and more than anything else, follow the law. And so now moving forward, I do look forward to checking out more products from Stopbox. They have a lot going on. They have some new products in the works and I'm definitely excited to see what they come up with moving into the future. And if you like this content, do me a favor, check out my Outer Limitless YouTube channel, which is my primary channel. On that channel, I have everything from hiking, camping, and backpacking excursions, all the gear associated with it. So from shelters, from sleep systems, knives, axes, you name it, that's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.